Some are 3,500 kilometer of national highway works in the state of Tamil Nadu at an investment of 1.03 lakh crores. These include, these include Madurai Kollam Corridor, Chittur Tachur Corridor, and construction will start next year. Second, 1,100 kilometer of national highway works in the state of Kerala at an investment of 65,000 crores, including, including 600 kilometer section of Mumbai Kanyakumari corridor in Kerala. Third, 675 kilometer of highway works in the state of West Bengal at a cost of at a cost of 25,000 crores, including up upgradation of existing road Kolkata Siliguri. National highway works of around 19,000 crores are currently in progress in the state of Assam. Further works of more than 34,000 crores covering more than 1,300 kilometers of national highways will be undertaken in the state in the coming three years. Some of the flagship corridors and other important projects that would see considerable activity in 2021-22 are in Annexure 2 to my speech. I am also providing an enhanced outlay of 1 lakh 18,101 lakh crores, 1 lakh 18,101 crores for Ministry of Road Transport and Highways, of which 1 lakh 8,230 crores is for capital, the highest ever provided. <laughs> Railway infrastructure. Honorable Speaker, sir, Indian Railways have prepared a National Rail Plan for India 2030. The plan is to create a future-ready railway system by 2030, bringing down the logistic costs for, a, for an industry is at the core of our strategy to enable Make in India. It is expected that Western Dedicated Freight Corridor and Eastern Dedicated Freight Corridor will be commissioned by June 2022. The following additional initiatives are also proposed. The Sonnagar Gomo sections, 263 kilometers of Eastern Dedicated Freight Corridor will be taken up in PPP mode in this year itself. Gomo Dankuni section of 274.3 kilometers will be also taken up short, shortly in short success, succession. We will undertake future dedicated freight corridor projects, namely East Coast Corridor from Karakpur to Vijayawada, East West Corridor from Busaval to Karakpur to Dankuni, and North South Corridor from Itarsi to Vijayawada. Detailed project reports will be undertaken in the first phase. Broad gauge root kilometers, RKM as they are referred to, electrified is expected to reach 46,000 kilometers, 46,000 RKMs. That is 72 percent by end of 2021 from 41. 1,548 RKMs on 1st October 2020. 100% electrification of broad gauge routes will be completed by December 2023. For passenger convenience and safety, the following measures are being proposed. We will introduce the aesthetically designed Vista Dome LHB coach on tourist routes to give better travel experience to passengers. 
the safety measures undertaken in the past few years have borne results. To further strengthen this effort, high-density network and highly utilized network routes of Indian Railways will be provided with an indigenously developed automatic train protection system that eliminates train collusion due to human error. I am providing a record sum of 1,10,055 crores for railways, which, of which 1,07,100 crores is for capital expenditure only. Urban infrastructure. We will work towards raising the share of public transport in urban areas through expansion of metro rail networks and augmentation of city bus services. A new scheme will be launched at a cost of 18,000 crores to support augmentation of public bus transport services. The scheme will facilitate deployment of innovative PPP models to enable private sector players to finance, to acquire, to operate, and to maintain over 20,000 buses. The scheme will boost the automobile sector, provide Philip to economic growth, create employment opportunities for our youth, and enhance ease of mobility for urban residents. A total of 702 kilometers of conventional metro is operational and another 1,016 kilometers of metro and RRTS is under construction in 27 cities. Two new technologies, that is Metro Light and Metro Neo, will be deployed to provide metro rail systems at much lesser cost with same experience, convenience, and safety in tier two cities and peripheral areas of tier one cities also. Central counterpart funding will be provided to Kochi Metro Railway phase two of 11.5 kilometer at a cost of 1,957.05 crores. Chennai Metro Railway Phase 2 of 118.9 kilometers at a cost of 63,246 crores. Bengaluru Metro Railway Project Phase 2A and 2B of 58.19 kilometers at a cost of 14,788 crores. Nagpur Metro Rail Project Phase 2 and Nashik Metro at a cost of 5,976 crores and 2,092 crores respectively. Power infrastructure. The past six years have seen a number of reforms and achievements in power sector. We have added 139 gigawatts of installed capacity, connected an additional 2.8 crore households, and added 1.41 lakh circuit kilometers of transmission lines. The distribution companies across the country are monopolies, either government or private. There is a need to provide choice to the consumers by promoting competition. A framework will be put in place to co give consumers alternatives to choose from among more than 13, uh, more than one distribution companies. I read that sentence again. A framework will be put in place to give consumers alternatives to choose from among more than one distribution company. The viability of distribution companies is a serious concern. A revamped reforms-based result-linked power distribution sector scheme will be launched with an outlay of 3,5,984 crores over five years. The scheme will provide assistance to DISCOMs for infrastructure creation, including prepaid smart metering, feeder separation, 
upgradation of systems, etc., tied to financial improvements. Prime Minister, while speaking at the third reinvestment conference in November 2020, had announced plans to launch a comprehensive national hydrogen energy mission. It is now proposed to launch a hydrogen energy mission in 2021-22 for generating hydrogen from green power sources. Ports, shipping and waterways. Major ports will be moving from managing their operational services on their own to a model where a private partner will manage it for them. For the purpose, for the purpose, seven projects worth more than 2,000 crores will be offered by the major ports on private-public partnership mode in FY21-22. A scheme for promoting flagging of merchant ships in India will be launched by providing subsidy support to Indian shipping companies in global tenders floated by ministries and CPSCs. An amount of 1,624 crores will be provided over five years. This initiative will enable greater training and employment opportunities for Indian seafarers besides enhancing Indian companies' share in global shipping. India has enacted Recycling of Ships Act in 2019 and acceded to the Hong Kong International Convention. Around 90 ship recycling yards at Alang in Gujarat have already achieved HKC compliant certificates. Efforts will be made to bring more ships to India from Europe and Japan. Recycling capacities of around 4.5 million light displacement ton LDT will be doubled by 2024. This is expected to generate an additional 1.5 lakh jobs for our youth. Petroleum and natural gas. Our government has kept fuel supplies running across the country without interruption during the COVID-19 lockdown period. Taking note of crucial nature, taking note of the crucial nature of the sector in people's lives, the following key initiatives are being announced. One, Wujwala scheme, which has benefited eight crore households will be extended to cover one crore more beneficiary. We will add 100 more districts in next three years to the city gas distribution network. A gas pipeline project will be taken up in the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir. An independent gas transport system operator will be set up for facilitation and coordination of booking of common carrier capacity in all natural gas pipelines on a non-discriminatory open access basis. Financial capital. I propose to consolidate the provisions of the SEBI Act 1992, Depositories Act 1996, Securities Contracts Regulation Act 1956 and Government Securities Act 2007 into a rationalized single securities markets code. The government would support the development of a world-class fintech hub at the GIFT IFSC. To instill confidence amongst the participants in corporate bond market, during times of stress and to generally enhance secondary market liquidity, it is proposed to create a permanent institutional framework. The proposed body would purchase investment-grade debt securities, both in the stressed and normal times, 
and help in the development of the bond market. In the budget 2018-19, government had announced its intent to establish a system of regulated gold exchanges in the country. For the purpose, SEBI will be notified as the regulator and warehousing development and regulatory authority will be strengthened to set up a commodity market ecosystem arrangement, including vaulting, assaying, logistics, etc., in addition to warehousing. Towards investor protection, I propose to introduce an investor charter as a right of all financial investors across all financial products. To give a further boost to the non-conventional energy sector, I propose to provide additional capital infusion of 1,000 crores to Solar Energy Corporation of India and 1,500 crores to Indian Renewable Energy Development Agency. I propose to amend the Insurance Act 1938 to increase the permissible FDI limit from 49% to 74% in insurance companies and allow foreign ownership and control with safeguards. Under the new structure, the majority of directors on the board and key management persons would be resident Indians with at least 50% of directors being independent directors and specified percentage of profits being retained as general reserve. Stressed asset resolution by setting up a new structure. The high level of provisioning by public sector banks of their stressed assets calls for a measure to clean up the bank books. An asset reconstruction company limited an asset management company would be set up to consolidate and take over the existing stressed debt and then manage and dispose of the assets to alternative investment funds and other potential investors for eventual value realization. Recapitalization of PSB. To further consolidate the financial capital capacity of PSBs, further recapitalization of 20,000 crores is proposed in 21-22. Deposit insurance. Last year, government had approved an increase in the deposit insurance cover from 1 lakh rupees to 5 lakhs for bank customers. I shall be moving amendments to DICGC Act 19, 1961 in this session itself to streamline the provision so that if a bank is temporarily unable to fulfill its obligations, the depositors of such bank can get easy and time-bound access to their deposits to the extent of the deposit insurance cover. This would help depositors of banks that are currently under stress. To improve credit discipline, while continuing to protect the interest of small borrowers for NBFCs with minimum asset size of 100 crores, the minimum loan size eligible for debt recovery under the securitization and reconstruction of financial assets and enforcement of security interest surface Act 2002, it is proposed to be reduced from the existing level of 50 lakhs to 20 lakhs. Company matters. The decriminalization of the procedural and technical compoundable offenses under Companies Act 2013 is now complete. I now propose to take up decriminalization of the Limited Liability Partnerships Act 2008. Honorable Speaker, I propose to revise the definition under, under the Companies Act 2013 for small companies by increasing the threshold for paid-up capital from 
not exceeding 50 lakh to not exceeding 2 crores and turnover from not exceeding 2 crores to not exceeding 20 crores. This will benefit more than 2 lakh companies in easing their compliance requirements. As a further measure which directly benefits startups and innovators, I propose to incentivize the incorporation of one-person companies by allowing one-person companies to grow without any restriction on paid-up capital and turnover, allowing their conversion into any other type of company at any time, reducing the residency limit for an Indian citizen to set up a one-person company from 182 days to 120 days, and allow also non-resident Indians to incorporate OPCs in India. This will be a big boost for startups. To ensure faster resolution of cases, the NCLT framework will be strengthened, e-code system will, shall be implemented, and alternate methods of debt resolution and special framework for MSMEs shall be introduced. During the coming fiscal, we will be launching data analytics, artificial intelligence, machine learning, driven MCA 2.1 version to MCA 21 version 3.0. MCA 21 version 3.0. This version 3.0 will have additional modu modules for e-scrutiny, e-adjudication, e-consultation, and compliance management. Disinvestment and strategic sale. In spite of COVID-19, we have kept working towards strategic disinvestment. A number of transactions, namely BPCL, Air India, Shipping Corporation of India, Container Corporation of India, IDBI Bank, Bharat uh, Earth Movers Limited, Pavan Hans, Neelachal Ispath Nigam Limited, among others, would be completed in 21-22. Other than IDBI Bank, we propose to take up the two public sector banks and one general insurance company in the year 21-22. This would require legislative amendments and I propose to introduce the amendments in this session itself. In 21-22, we would also bring the IPO of LIC, for which I am bringing the requisite amendments in this session itself. In the Atmanirbar package, I had announced that we will come out with a policy of strategic disinvest disinvestment of public sector enterprises. I'm happy to inform the House that the government has provided, provided, sorry, the government has approved the said policy. The policy provides a clear roadmap for disinvestment in all non-strategic and strategic sectors. We have kept four areas that are strategic, where bare minimum CPSCs will be maintained and rest privatized. In the remaining sectors of all CPSCs will be privatized. The main highlights of the policy are mentioned in Annexure 3. To fast forward the disinvestment policy, I'm asking Neeti to work out uh, on the next list of center public sector companies that would be taken up for strategic disinvestment. To similarly incentivize states to take to disinvestment of their public sector companies, we will work out an incentive package of central funds to states. Idle assets will not contribute to Atmanirbar Bharat. The non-core assets largely consist of surplus land with government ministries and departments and public sector enterprises. Monetizing of land can either be by way of direct sale or concession or by similar means. This requires special abilities and for this purpose, I propose to use a special purpose vehicle in the form of a company 
that would carry out this activity. In, in order to ensure timely completion of closure of sick or loss-making CPSCs, we will introduce a revised mechanism that will ensure timely closure of such units. I have estimated 1,75,000 crores as receipts from disinvestment in BE 21-22. Government financial reforms. Under the Treasury single account, the TSA system, autonomous bodies directly draw funds from the government's account at the time of actual expenditure, saving interest costs. We will extend.